boys and girls, children of all ages. Welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right, XFL Week 6. We are past the halfway point. We've played half of the games of Season 1. We've played five games. We've got five games left. What have we learned in the last five weeks that we didn't know five weeks ago? One thing I would say, I think the XFL is a pretty decent product. Yeah, they're going to have their issues with officiating, with calls. So does the NFL. Um, I think really to know if the XFL is going to be a success is what happens to these players in August. What happens next spring when we have a XFL Season 2? I have not heard if we're definitely going to have it or not. I think we should. Um, so week 5, I was 3-1 straight up picks. 3-1 and one against the spread, 1-3 and three on the over-under. Brings the year-to-day total of 12-8 and eight up straight up picks, 9-11 and 11 against the spread, 11-9 and nine on the over-under, which makes me 32-28 of 28 for the 32 and 28 for the year, 53% overall of my picks. Not bad for five weeks of a league that, didn't, that we didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> All right, so first game we have is the 5-0 Houston Roughnecks. Going into New York versus the 3-2 and two New York Guardians. Now the Roughnecks are one of few teams that are pretty equal on the road or at home. On the road, they're scoring 30.5 30, 30, 30. points a game while giving up 23. The Guardians at home, they're actually scoring points. They've scored a 23, on the average, 23.3 points a game at home. 4.5 points on the road. Their defense... They're scoring 9.6 points a game, on, or giving up 9.6 at home, giving up 28 on the road. At home, the Guardians are 2-0. The Roughnecks on the road are 2-0. I think Houston is a better team overall. I am picking the Roughnecks to win. They are favored by 6.5. I got them winning covering. I am taking, I'm taking under on the 47. What the Guardians are doing at home on defense... I think they can stop the offense of Houston. So I'm taking under on the 47. Next up, we have the St. Louis Battlehawks. Kaka! At 3 and 2. I'm in the St. Louis area, so that's why I'm all about the Battlehawks. Um, versus the 1 and 4 Tampa Bay Vipers. St. Louis actually should have been the Vipers. I like the Kaka for the Battlehawks, but Vipers, Randy Orton from WWE, is from St. Louis. It would have made sense because, like, Seattle Dragons. Dana Bryan's from uh, Seattle, or from the Washington area. He was known as the American Dragon. Anyway, <laughs> Battlehawks on the road this year, only scoring 15 points a game, giving up 17. At home, they're scoring 26. Um, Tampa Bay at home, they're actually scoring 26, giving up 17, versus 15 on the road. Uh, on the road, the Battlehawks are 1-2. and two. The Vipers are 1-1 one one at home. Every week this year, of the first five weeks, four of the first five weeks, I have picked the Battlehawks to win. Last week, I picked D.C. to win versus the Battlehawks. I have 4-1 and one in Battlehawks games this year. Hopefully we go to 5-1. and one. I'm actually taking the Battlehawks to win this. Um, they're going to cover the three points and under on the 42.5. Next up, we have the Dallas Renegades 2-3 and three versus the 3-2 and two D.C. Defenders. Um, Dallas on the road, they're scoring 24 points a game this year, given they're only scoring 13 at home. They're giving up 15 on the road, we're giving up 24 at home. DC, they are just a, I mean, a lot of these teams are this way. DC at home, scoring 24 points a game on the road, averaging 4. Defense, giving up 8.3 average at home, 32 on the road. D.C. is 3-0 at home, 0-2 on the road, while Dallas is 0-3 at home and 2-0 on the road. This actually should be a pretty good matchup. Um, Dallas is great on the road, but D.C. is great at home. I am taking D.C. to win. I got them covering the 4 and over on the 35. Last but not least, we have the Los Angeles Wildcats, 2-3, versus the 1-4 Seattle Dragons. Uh, Los Angeles on the road, scoring 15 points a game at home, scoring 32. Defensively, they're giving up 27 on the road. Seattle, on the road, scoring 28. At home, scoring 14. Defensive, getting about 16 at home. 
They're 1-1 one one at home, 0-3 oh away. Well, Wildcats are 0-2 oh away and 2-1 and at home. I agonized over this one for a little bit when I went to pick. I'm like, ugh. Uh, the Dragons are difficult um, at home. They've got that one win at home, though. That was against Tampa. So it was against a 1-3 uh, team at the time, 1-2 team at the time. So the win was against a lower team. Not that the Wildcats are a great team. I am taking the Wildcats to win. I've um, got them covering the two. I'm taking over on the 44 and a half. I just don't think anybody's stopping anybody here. Um, so that's going to be week six of the XFL. As we all know, there is talk of sporting events not having fans in the crowd due to the crisis that is affecting not only our nation but the world right now, the coronavirus. And no, the coronavirus is not coming from Corona Beer. Uh, if you know anybody that's been affected by this, hopefully they're safe and sound. I uh, personally do not. Uh, I know it's in my area. I was, you know, here over the weekend, there were some accounts of people in the area. Um, so, hopefully everyone stays safe. Some of the safeguards we talked about is washing your hands and make sure don't, if you touch things, don't touch your face or your mouth or anything. I will say this flu season, flu season typically starts what? November, December? until now, until spring. I've not gotten sick yet this year, knock on wood. One thing that I've done um, is, obviously I wash my hands a lot, um, is I've been taking a lot of vitamin C. Um, so anybody out there that hasn't been sick this flu season, um, take vitamin C. That's what I've been doing so far, so good. Um, hopefully it continues. Um, hopefully no one gets sick and, you know, unfortunately passes away from this horrible coronavirus that's going on. Um, I know I have a trip for work in the next month. I know WrestleMania is next month. We got all these sporting events, NBA Finals, NCAA. Oh my God. March Madness is upon us. What's going to happen with that? I'm um, definitely, I'll have some uh, videos about March Madness here at Harvard Sports Show. But yeah, just the kind of uncertainty in the world right now is kind of unique. Um, to toilet paper shortage is a real thing. I went to Walmart last night. The entire aisle was empty. Now there's nothing on these shelves of this aisle. I literally asked the girl working there, are you guys moving? She's like, no. I walked into this. I'm like, what the fuck? I went to a second Walmart. They had five things of toilet paper left in the aisle, period. Some cheap shit, the ones I buy, and something else. I ended up buying, and I'm like, I had to have it. It wasn't like I was buying it to stock up, but yeah. If you're experiencing that too, holy shit, people. But anyway, that's XFO Week 6. I really want to know your opinion on how will these games come off on TV with nobody in the stands. Should they do that or should they just postpone the season? What's your opinion on that? My opinion would be for TV sake, TV ratings, I think if you have a game in an empty stadium, I think you still get the TV revenue. We're safe and sound in our home watching and enjoying it. It may actually help the TV ratings. Now people can't go. But I think the what we're used to as a watching sporting events, having 10, 15, 20, 50, 100,000 people there, it's going to make a difference. You're going to notice it because the crowd interaction, like in pro wrestling and everything, is a thing. So we'll see what happens. Um, as always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader, Sports Town Content.